everybody, I'm back again to give you a quick update. Sorry, I've just kicked camera there. I'm not having much luck with my cameras. And that's my first, um, my first thing I'd like to say about yesterday, not yesterday, whenever I took that last video. Uh, I started off on my camera, on my tripod, um, and I didn't realise the battery was on its last legs. But, but I were at a point at my magneto where we were on that such a good good run with it, I had to carry on and I didn't want to miss any any points by not videoing it. So I, I went back to my flip phone. So you've got a, you had a bit of a bit of stable camera work and a bit of probably haphazard camera work. And I apologise for that. Um, I think I've said it a numerous times. Uh, I'm not an expert at doing any of this making videos or doing rewinds I'm just a I'm just a novice and I'm, I'm learning as I go on so what I'm uh, going to update you on now is really um, is really a few tips what I found uh, it might help somebody and it might not I mean uh, we're all learning and we're, we've all got different points of view and everything so one thing leads to other and you might get different tips from different people so I'll just give you my tips what, what I found on doing this bit of a project well I say a bit it's been a, been a been a long haul so oh by the way I've finished the secondary winding now I've put nearly 11,000 co coils of wire on and about 62 layers of wire and insulation so that's where I'm up to at the moment. I'm just ready for for cutting it off and removing it from front lathe. So I just thought I'd let give you these few tips. When I started to when I put the secondary winding on on the primary, I used I used a transition wire. And I sold a transition wire to primary and then the transition wire to to this very thin wire. Now this wire is only 0.08 of a mil diameter which is about three to three and a half thou. It's very thin. So to start with you've got to get this insulation off this very thin wire to solder it. Now what I used was a bit of worn emery cloth and I just pulled it through my fingers if, if you can get what I mean like this gently to get the insulation off. Now you've got to be careful because if you just grab it too much and pull too much it, it snaps. So be very careful now when when you think you've got the insulation off just to double check that you have because you can't really tell by looking at it. I got me uh, my multimeter put it onto audible siren for resistance and just on that bit I'd been rubbing just put my multimeter on to make sure I were getting a reading to so I knew insulation were off. Then you can wrap that round your transition wire, solder it on and then Bob's your uncle, you're away. But when you start that secondary winding you've got to be really careful because you've got all the tensions on that little bit of soldered joint. So what I did I put my magnifying hat on, which is here, look, this magnifier, you'll probably need one of them when you're doing this, no matter how good your eyes are. Uh, I put that on, and using a piece of dowel, like this, sharpened to a pencil point, and just emery clothed off to a fine, nice fine point, I got the transit the the uh, secondary wire started by just keeping the tension off the soldered joint slightly and then doing everything by hand till I got a, probably half a dozen turns on without overlapping and without being slack a nice you know a nice fit before I started to put the power on the lathe now when you put the power on the lathe, or even when you do it by hand, what's important is, if I just wind this spindle back a bit, 
by doing that with, wire, with the wire comes out the nozzle here I've now got some backlash in the wire you want to make sure all the time that you've got that tension on the wire so the pulley at the drums just able to move because if it's got backlash in that bit of wire as soon as it kicks in it's liable to snap the wire more easily so just make sure you've got tension on that wire all the time and if you have to take the tension off for any reason to, if you get an overlap and you've got to just adjust it just make sure you bring that tension back till that drum just moves so there's a tip for you um, um, when you put the power on when you're ready for doing your, your run I tended to just I didn't like going mad at putting, putting clutch lever in I just like slip the clutch a little fraction just to get the lathe running I think that helps so there's a point for you now when you put in your cap your polyamide insulation tape which trade names captain I think for this just a little pointer here right, when you're doing that because you've got to really be careful because of this this was always in the way I used the handle off a nail file like this and what I do I've got a scrap piece of tape here I'll just show you it's not the not proper size but I just stick it to nail file plastic handle and then thread it down if you can see what I'm doing thread it down the back put your hand underneath and then by doing that you can get the tape lined up precisely to apply it onto coil and that's how I did that so that's just a little pointer for you I mean you might you might some people might come up with a better idea but once I'd done it a few times you know it, it were quite it was quite easy that uh, now before I put that tape on, I think I, I think I told you this in my last video, but well, I'll just run through it again. Instead of putting that anti-tracking varnish on, which I got, which which you brush on, a good friend of mine gave me some uh, insulation spray. It's like a lacquer. And what I did, I just I shown you in my last video. I just sprayed a bit on to cover all the circumference. And what that does. It's not to insulate really, because this, this tape's doing that. It, that really is just to set the wires together, to keep them together. And when this goes off, it's like, it's like a bit of a glue, if you like, and stops any loose wire that you may have, which, which you shouldn't have, but just so you did have. It, it, it avoids them then coming outside of tape. I mean, you shouldn't have any loose wires, but it just like belt and bracing it. If if I, I like that term, belt and brace it. Uh, so yeah, that's what I use for that. Now there's no to stop you painting that va that anti-tracking varnish on. It just means you'll have to paint it on with a brush unless you can put it in a little spray gun. So that's what I use for that. Now. If you're ready, for, if you just do this nice and thinly, it dries in a few seconds. But if you've just gone a bit mad and you've put a bit too much on, just go over it with your hot air gun very carefully. Just waft it. Don't like go mad on it because heat from this will probably melt that thin wire. Uh, and then that dries it quick. So that's for air gun. I'm just trying to have my notes while I was while I were doing this I'm just trying to run through a few tips for you now when you start on your first few layers you're starting nearly to full width of this core not quite though now every every few turns you want to start coming in each side with, with less windings and then a few layers more come in a bit more and then eventually when you get to the top you'll have like a bit of a crown a crown on the top and that's how it wants to end up so I've been told anyway that's not my idea that's that's how it should be done so uh, so where I'm up to now then 
my wire's still attached, I've got my insulation tape on, I've got to cut this off, remove everything, then solder my transitional wire on to get me up to my 0.9 wire that goes into my slip ring uh, on magneto. So that's where I'm up to and my next stage now is to apply some uh, varnish and or, I don't have decided yet, some epoxy resin and uh, on Bruffnut's website he suggests that it's best done if you can have it in a vacuum so I'm going to make a vacuum chamber, a simple vacuum chamber so when I get my epoxy or my varnish or maybe both, I don't know yet, so I can just put it in this vacuum chamber and suck all the air out so it's getting into all nooks and crannies um, I think that's 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 it now for all my little tips. Oh, and obviously before I put the epoxy resin on, I've got to put a, I've got to wrap it in that woven fiberglass material. It's like a bandage, but it's woven fiberglass, so it's got to have that round it as well. Uh, I think that's it really. But what what I was just going to say to you is, I see a lot of videos on YouTube that. They give, you, they, they give you really good ideas, but some a lot of them don't go into a great detail uh, what they're using and how much they're using and where they where they got it from and how much were it, if you know what I mean. So I might do a short video next just to tell you everything I used. Well, I'll, I'll quickly tell you everything I use now, but I'll, I'll go into more detail. I mean, there's primary wire, secondary wire... There's your anti-tracking varnish, there's your polyamide insulation tape, which is captain tape, a bit of woven fiberglass tape, then you want that Nomex polyester laminate sheet that goes down cheeks and sides of armature. I think I called it Numex last time, it's it's Nomex. Uh, some wire some insulation to go over your wires, you might always want a couple of sizes of that. Uh, I think that's all you need really and all that all that where I bought to do this project come to I think it come to less than 40 pound but there's enough of everything to do at least two armatures and there'll be there'll be enough of some of things to do even more so basically I've I'll have done this project for less than 20 pound when it when it's all done and dusted it's just a, a lot of time and patience really that's the main problem you've got to set your stall out and uh, and don't rush it so there's a few tips for you so I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off now I think I've said too much now uh, and then I'll come back to you with a video video on materials and then uh, another update as to where I am with vacuum chamber so anyway, thanks for watching.